put us first. Lord, Father God, Abba, Father, you put us first. That you gave your son to be the sacrifice for our well-being. Lord, that we might be brought back into fellowship. That we might be brought back into right standing with you. That sin would be conquered. Your son has conquered. Has, has defeated our enemy. Oh, there is no sting in death, Lord, that you have conquered the grave, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your master plan. We thank you, Lord, that at the right time you sent your Son to come and save us from ourselves. Lord, that we're weak in ourselves, but in you we're strong. And Lord, we look to you this morning. Father God, we look to you that we honor the Father, we honor the Son, but we honor the Father. We honor you, Father God, that we believe that you too and the Holy Spirit are working together for our good. That you're working together for our good. Oh, church, aren't you thankful this morning that he's working together for our good? He's at work in us to do of his good pleasure. And in the times that we're living in, I mean, I believe that we will usher back Jesus' return. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. I'm telling you what, it's exciting times. We may look at it as like, oh, everything that's going on. But to God be the glory. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You can trust in me. You see, that's why we're here today, because we're trusting in the living God. Yeah. We have a good, good Father. Yeah. We have Jesus, who has made unto us our righteousness. The work that he has done for us. See, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Calling on the name of Jesus. I tell you what, the plan that God has for those that love him. Is there anybody in the house that loves him today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Well, you may sit down and wave at somebody as you're sitting down. Good seeing you today. We've got some announcements here. Happy Father's Day. It is Men's Day today that we want to thank God for all the men that's in, in, in the house here today. Amen. Amen. Come on, give yourself a hand there. All right. Where are we at here? Oh, yes. If, if this is your first time being here, we want to welcome you. And, and if you've been here before, we're going to welcome you also. So let's give ourselves a hand there for being here today. Well, as Pastor said, we're celebrating all the dads and awesome men here at New Life. And after service, we at the, on the table back there, as you leave, there is a gift bag for all the men here today. So we want you to please grab one of those on your way out. Also, we have a backdrop here to take some pictures. So if you'll stop there, get, grab your family, grab a friend, whoever. If you need me in the pictures, just let me know. <laughs> There's some captain's hats over there if you you like to wear stuff like that in your pictures, but um, I also asked Brittany to stand back there and help take pictures if you, on your camera or on her camera. She can send it to you, but uh, please do that on your way out today. Next Sunday, we're going to be honoring our uh, high school graduates, and uh, we're excited to do that, And so, uh, but we're doing something a little different this year. We're also going to add a couple college grads to that because you know with everything going on you know how the graduations have been going uh, yeah so uh, Brittany is she is going to get to go back and graduate we didn't know for a while but she is going to get to go but Michelle yeah is not going to get to go to her college graduation so we're going to have uh, them as well but so if you want to be a blessing to any of the high school we've got two high school grads we have Anna Sale and Justin Tanner and then we have college grads, Brittany Riddle now, and Shell Ferguson. So if you want to be a blessing to any of those, uh, you can uh, bring it with you next week, and they'll gladly receive that from you. 
Also want to let everyone know, all the ladies, the women's Bible study that meets on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. is started up again. So if you would like to join them, ladies, uh, it's in the West Wing, please come out to that. So next Sunday is Communion Sunday. And so uh, prepare your hearts to receive communion next Sunday. So come and, you know, it's always good to always be judging yourself. Amen? Yeah. You know, it's it's not that we're called to judge one another. We're to discern things. But, you know, we're, we're, we're not called to condemn anybody. Sure. Amen? There's only one judge. Yeah. His name is Jesus. Yeah. The Father has committed that to him. So we'll let him do his job. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, uh, the offering time, as you know, we've been doing uh, as you leave. The, the plates are back there on the table. And uh, as the sign says, you can uh, give by text or online. There's also an app that you can download on your phone. But uh, I just wanted to remind you all, too, that if you give to any of the extra things that we're receiving, we have two ministries we receive for, and that's our missions ministry that we uh, do every month our Feed the Need ministry that we're continuing every month. And then we also are collecting in our building fund and for the chairs that have been ordered. So you can mark any of those on your check or on the envelope. And then if you text to give, you can do things like B fund for building fund and the amount, chairs and the amount, missions, that kind of thing. Or uh, if you use the app, you can... Um, Use the drop-down menu. Yeah. I know. There's a lot of ways yeah. to give. Yeah. We're trying to make it convenient, yeah. but it sounds confusing. So uh, anyway, if you like, if you need help with any of that, if you want to start doing the Just online. Just ask your 10-year-old if you've yeah. got somebody <laughs> to pay. <laughs> yeah. Or your, yeah. Yeah. Or, or even younger. Four. <laughs> yeah. They, they're pretty good at it. Yeah. But anyway, if you have any questions about that, uh, you can ask Brittany, myself. We're um, happy to help you with that. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. praise the Lord. It's not offering time. We're going to do that at the end. <laughs> Catching you, see if you are kind of what we're doing. But I do need, if you don't mind, I need my sword. Got water. We'll travel. No. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Father's Day. Are you yes. going to celebrate? Yes. I tell you what, God created male and female. Amen. You know that? that? That we're created in God's image and Today is Father's Day, so we're going to honor men today, and we've got some parting gifts, as we have said, so make sure you get that gift, and you know, when you think about Father's Day, and you think about men, and, and, and what we're called to do, you know, and you know, in Proverbs 10, 1, it says, a wise son makes a glad father. How many here, you, you love it when, when your, your sons or your daughters are wise? Anybody? I mean, it makes you proud when, when that happens. In Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 20, it says, A wise son makes a father glad. So, you know, let's make our fathers glad. <laughs> let's, let's be wise. Wise as serpent, but yet harmless as doves. You know, back in the day, I'm just going to take us back a few years, kind of, and, and just see how many can get, you know, if, if you have the answer, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Okay, don't just blurt it out, okay? But looking back on sitcoms, now this one's an easy one. On the Brady Bunch, who was the father? Who was it, Scotty? Mike. Mike, Mike Brady, huh? All right, now I'm going to get a little bit tougher here. How about my three sons? Got to raise your hand. My, my three sons. Look at that. I stumped you. <laughs> Woo! I mean, so, this crowd over here, I've never heard of it. <laughs> My three sons. I'm going to give you the answer. Are you ready? Steve Douglas. You're right. Now you remember. You're right. Hallelujah. All right. Now you all you got to get this one. Leave it to Beaver. Ward Cleaver. Ward Cleaver. That's it. <laughs> Now, now, this is for fun, but this is also to understand about being fathers. There's a method to my madness here today to, to get you to learn something about fathers. How about Bonanza? Ben Cartwright. Woo! We watch that all the time. And I don't know if you all did, but that little Joe. 
I always thought I was Little Joe. I liked how he had his, his gun, his holster there, and just the way it looked, and always had that green jacket. Come on. I guess it was green if it showed him. <laughs> but, all right. How about this one here? Hazel. Oh, come on. Hazel, you don't remember Hazel? She, she called him George Baxter. That's right. Wow. That's right. Mr. B is what she called him. How about Big Valley? This is another one that we watched. Big, on Big Valley? Well, who? There was a father on there. Because I got the answer. Tom Barkley. Now, he, maybe he was a son. But, uh oh, I have mutiny out here. <laughs> Ushers. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to skip Big Valley. Okay? That's too much of a valley. <laughs> now, now, this was one of my favorites. They call him Flipper. Who, who, who was the father on Flipper? Nobody. Boy, I tell you what, maybe I'm going back too far. I'm going back too far. Who is a father on, on The Simpsons? Homer Simpson. <laughs> See, I mean, you know that. But that's, that's, that's something. Porter Ricks on Flipper. So next time we have this, I want you to remember this. Okay? Porter Ricks. And I'm, I'm going to stop there. I, 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 you, you, you won't know. Please don't eat the daisies. You, you've probably never heard of that. Okay? All right. Now... The reason why I wanted to bring this up, that some of the sitcoms back in the day, they portrayed fathers as being smart, as, as being strong, as being there in the home, and how important that is today. You know, I don't know if you've ever watched, I mean, some of this stuff there, uh, Married with Children, but it makes the father look like he's dumb. You know, Homer Simpson, he, it makes him look dumb. I mean, and, and it's like sometimes that's what the world, you know, fa fathers don't know best. Fathers don't know what's going on. But to me, fathers need to know, you know, we need to bring back the respect. Come on, can I get an amen? We need to bring back the respect in the homes for, for men. But, but man, we've got to step up. Man, let's say this. We need to step up. We need to step up. All right. I believe you. You know, the Italian prophet in the Old Testament, you, you, you know who that is? Malachi. Yep, it's the last book in the Old Testament. Some call it uh, Malachi, but we call it Malachi. Uh, there's people who said he's the Italian prophet. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? Some of you have, some of you haven't. Okay, take it with a grain of salt, that there. But it is Malachi. But he, he says this, that before the Lord returns, he says, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. How many know that needs to be done today? Yes. We need that. I mean, we, we need men to step up and, 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 and look and, and see how important children are. And you might say, well, I don't have any children. Well, look around. There, there's people that, that we are like father figures, and, and, and we need to begin to speak into their life. Never look at your life as, as well, I, I, I don't have children of my own. Well, the Bible says that we are a family. And as the family of God, there are many that, that can step up and be a mentor. How many here look at yourself, men that are here, that you look at yourself as a mentor? Anybody look at yourself as good? Because it's important that, that we have that, and, and our hearts need to be towards our children. And I believe that as the men turn their heart to, to children, that they'll turn their hearts to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. You know, it's in, in Ephesians 6, 4, it says, You fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring...
bring them up in the training admonition of the Lord. That word admonition means put in mind. How many know that we need to be putting in the minds of our children good things, godly things? Come on, think about it. Godly things, putting in their mind. You know, the whole thing, you know, the, the, the battlefield of the mind, the soul, your mind, your will, and emotions. And, and, and we see in the world today what our children, their minds are just, I mean, filled with things of uncertainty and, and, and not sure and, and, and just the trouble, troubled times, stressful times, and, and, and we see that going on. How many of you see that going on in the world today? Yeah. And it's like, what's going to stop that? I, I believe that when the fathers turn their hearts to the children, that the children will turn their hearts to us. There has to be mentors in the world today. There needs to be fathers in the world today. Come on, give me an amen on that. Amen. And, he, and he says, you know, it's not this saying, do what I say, not what I do. Do you understand that? We, we, we ought to be saying, do what I say and do what I do. Yes. It's no good. Well, go do this. Well, you're not doing that. How many know our actions speak louder than our words? Yes. So it's important what we are displaying. It's important, men, of, of, of how we handle ourselves, of, of what we're doing with our life, because people are reading you. They're reading us to see what we stand for, what we believe. You know, as I was preparing this, it's like I begin to think, what did my father teach me? And I want you to think about this as fathers. What did you teach your children? But the thing that came to my mind about my father, that when it was, when, when it was thundering outside, go to the basement. Always go to the basement. We lived right across the street. I mean, we, we lived on a dead-end street, and, and we lived right across from Grandma Cotton. And anytime there was a thunderstorm, we went over to the basement. I can remember that as a child. That, that's something, go to the basement. Another thing that I learned from my dad is don't count train cars. <laughs> My brother Tommy counted them and the car broke down and <laughs> it wasn't good for him. <laughs> Something else that I learned from my dad is how to turn channels on a TV. <laughs> and you might say, well, how did you learn something? He says, Larry, get up and, and change the channel. <laughs> then I take and I flip it, Donald, no, you'll break it. <laughs> Softly turn it. Daddy, this, this is before the remote. This is before you could speak and say, hey, what, whatever. I was the remote. <laughs> you know, another thing that my dad taught me that how to earn a dime for candy. If I rubbed his feet, now that was for all the kids. If you rubbed his feet, he had feet that were just sore. And he'd say, hey, you want to earn a dime or a quarter? Sure. And you'd rub his feet. You might say, well, this sounds like child labor. <laughs> uh, but it's like when you think, you know, the thing that Dad did that I can say as I was thinking of the things that he taught me now, I don't remember him teaching me how to play basketball. Now, I know Stan said that he'd get out there and play basketball with them and shoot hoops, but with me, I don't remember that. You know, and that's something he he could work on cars, and, and and you know he grew up and he was called junker, so he he worked on you know a, a junkyard, so he knew how to put car engines and, and fix them up, and that's something that I always want to do, but that just didn't happen. He didn't teach me that, you know. So so there's things that I wanted to know and to be taught, but he didn't teach me that. And you know how time can go; it can go quickly. But he did teach me something that, that I don't know if he even realized. The love of singing. Dad loved to sing. He, he liked Dean Martin. He liked Johnny Cash. And I can remember him singing in the house. I can remember him doing that. And that's something 
I think I picked up because when I was about four or five, I'd go over to Grandpa Cotton's house because she was right across the street there. And I'd go in there and, Grandma, I'll sing for you. <laughs> and she'll say, well, what's it going to cost me? <laughs> <laughs> Only a dime. That's good. And I'd, and I'd hide in the closet and sing because I wasn't yet brave enough to stand in front of her and sing to her. But she'd get so tickled at that. And I'd come out, and I can remember there's times when Uncle Davey was there also, and, and they were both laughing and giggling, and, you know, I'm like, all right, I need that dime. But the love of singing, you know, that's, that's something that, that I, I believe that my dad taught me. But, you know, something that, that what, dads, don't miss the most important thing to teach your children. Are you ready to hear it? The most important thing as a father, as a mentor, is teach our children how to be the anchor for our families. Now, this is the definition of an anchor. A heavy object attached to a chain or rope. I'm not talking about that one. Okay? This is the one. The next one that I'm talking about is what hit home. A person that provides stability or confidence in uncertain situations or times. I'm going to say it again. A person that provides stability or confidence in uncertain situations and times. How many know that we're living in uncertain times? Yes. <laughs> People need to see men that are stable. Stable in the Lord. Anchors. It's so important for us to understand that and, and not just, well, whatever will be, will be. No, don't, don't take it that way. If, if you're going to teach somebody, if you're going to teach your children, teach your children how to be strong in the Lord, Amen. how to be that anchor for them. You know, it's like I've got an illustration here that I want to show you because I believe that it will help us in our to understand we're in this world, but not of this world. But how many know that the world is pulling on us? Yes. Pulling on the family. So I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I've asked PT's family to come on up here, Pastor Tony and his family. And then I've got some over here that's going to help out. But I want you to get a visual to help you to see and understand what's going on in the days that we're living in. So they're going to come on up here on stage. I'm going to move this to the... They're helping me. And as they're, we'll put you guys over here. Hey, let's give them a hand here. Come on. This year, you know, I call them the Stoop family. And, and, and they, it's, it's kind of just a joke between us. But there's times that they're sitting on the staircase waiting for their man of God to go home <laughs> for, for PT to say well it's time to go so I, I've kind of labeled them that and just fun but as, as they're setting up I, I want us to think about you know that the world is pulling on you don't you how many know it's trying to pull you over to their side how many have ever played tug of war anybody you know the the strongest wins. The strongest wins. Now, now. Yeah, yeah. We got to come closer. We got to come closer. They're they're putting on their costumes here. And Jake, why don't you come up here first? Because I want to show you. You just stand up here. You all know what this is. Money. money. How many know the love of money is what? Evil. Evil. The root of all evil. And how many know the world is wanting? People to love money. Right. Trying to pull the family more money, more money, more money. But in reality, you know what, what we're going to see here, the most important thing that we can teach our children is to love God. Amen. Now, as we love God, God honors his word. Amen. Amen. That, that he, he gives us the ability to get wealth. Did you know that? Uh -huh. We're in a covenant with God. He gives us the ability to get wealth. But it's like I heard somebody say, we are to love people and use money and not love money and use people. 
So, so don't get that backwards. So we got money. What else is on the back here? We got a little bit of just the media going on so social media. How many know that pulls on the family? There's a lot on media that our kids can get involved in and to their destruction. Pulling them the pull of the world. All right, thank you, Jake. Who else we got? We got Brittany up here, and then we got some drugs, alcohol. How many know that pulls on the family? How many know that when you get into that place of, of being a teenager, sometimes in that arena as being a teenager, your friends, your peers, that peer pressure, they, they have an influence on, on your children. Friends have an influence on your children. So, parents, we have to be watching and aware. So, and on the back here, we got sickness. And it looks like the coronavirus. <laughs> it looks like that's trying to pull. It's trying to pull. It's trying to put people in fear. I mean, you know, and, and, and fear, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. But if you're constantly watching the media and saying, it, it, it'll, it'll pull you. Sure. It'll pull you to start believing that. And, and that's why I put these together here. And then we got time. How many know that time? I mean, sometimes we think we got all the time in the world. And time is going by fast. Time is slipping into the future. That's a song. <laughs> but it's like... We want to seize the day. We want to seize the moment. So that time is pulling on us. What else you got? Just shelter, home, food that weighs on parents of, of just providing. How many here you have that? It, it kind of weighs on you. Just everything that's needed and, and it pulls. And it's like, so, so I've got these that they're going to pull. And then we got up here right now. We got... Uh, Let's, from the youngest, I'm going to put you back here, Mom. I'm going to put you back here. The youngest, there you go, just like that. Just like that. And, and if you notice, Pastor Tony's not there yet. He's not grabbing a hold of the rope. Okay? And I, I, I want us to understand that, that when, as a family unit, and sometimes without the father being the anchor, how many know that it's, it's hardship? Because God didn't intend for it to be that way. God intended for that husband, for that man, to be over his family in a good way. Amen. And, and being in a good way is to be that anchor. So I wanted to give you a visual of what it's like because I kind of grew up in, in, in a home where, where our, our father was absent, you know, and, and in that, my mother had to basically be the father also. And how many know when you have to be both parents, it was never intended to be that way. It was never intended to be that way. And it makes it hard. Harder than what, what it was created to be. So I just put a little, they're pulling and they're, they're winning here. They're kind of pulling you this way, Kiki. So there you go. So we see the world is pulling. Pull them a little bit more. Come on this way, family. Okay, stop right there. Now here comes Super Dad. There you go. He doesn't have a cape, but he's got a tie. That's what we like. Now Dad's where he needs to be. Okay? He's the anchor for his family. And in that, you know, we're cheering, but it's like in that is still to understand what this represents right here, the family that's going on in the world today. If, if you don't understand what's going on in the world today, what's going on in the world today, the father is not there. There's not enough mentors going around teaching our children. But you know what? The church needs to step up. The church, that means men, that we need to step up and, and be an anchor to those that don't, the, the, the father's absent, they're missing, that we need to step in and be that, that role. But now watch and see what happens. 
No, you, you hold down. You guys are coming this way. There you go. All right. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. And I'll, hey, you guys are going to get to keep, keep the, the nice uh, signs? Yeah, signs and stuff. That'll be nice to hang up in your house. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to give you that visual of how important it is for men to step up in the days that we're living in. How many have ever played tug of war? I know at my brother's house, he and, and, and he put a piece of plastic. Then he'd water it down. He put soap, <laughs> dish soap, dish soap. So and you're on this plastic, and you're pulling and slipping and sliding. It's like, and it's a big enough piece that it, 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 it takes it a little bit. But once that first person gets off that plastic, they're, then they're on that ground where they can get some footing. Then, I mean, that, that team always wins when that happens. So getting your footing, I mean, I mean, get down there, be that anchor. Because it's, it's not the first one that's off. It, it, it's the one that's the anchor that's off first that gets on solid ground. Are you listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. And, you know, Noah. We're, we're going to talk about Noah. Anybody know anything about Noah? He built a boat, didn't he? Yeah. A big one. Which I think they got a replica there. Is it in Tennessee or Kentucky? Which, Kentucky. if it's in Kentucky, I want to go there and see it. Yes, they, they made a replica of it. And, but uh, in, in Hebrews 11, 7, it says this. It says, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Now, that's the part that I want you to see. In, 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 in another translation, it says the saving of his family. Noah, Noah, do you understand what was going on during Noah's time? It said that the whole world was evil, continually thinking of evil things. But it says that Noah found grace, favor in the eyes of the Lord. And it's like we're, we're, we're going to look at Noah because sometimes... Noah, we, we, we don't go very deep about Noah. He, he built this ark. He built this boat. But what we don't understand is, like, how long did he take to build that boat? How long was he working on this? Now, dads, how many here that you, you've ever put, put a swing set together? <laughs> how long did that take you? You're still working on it, right? <laughs> Got some extra parts that are still there. Come on. I, I, I know for me, it's like, ah, oh, we've got some extra parts. Oh, well, it, it, I'll have them, and I'll put them in a safe place. Yeah. That safe place you can't find. Yeah. Like, where did I put those? I need that. And, but I can remember building a pool and a deck for our family years ago when our kids were small. Now, in that, it, it took me a while because I had to dig the holes for all the footings there for, for the poles to drop into. And then a deck that went, it, it was what? Kind of a half. It, it, it went half, halfway around the pool. And then, <coughs> then I, huh? Three sides. Yes, it was three sides. You're right. But all around it, it, it had a privacy fence. So it was no small task to do it. And it took some time doing it. But I'm telling you what, it did not take me 75 years to do it. <laughs> Noah, they, 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 they figured about 75 years for him to build that boat. Can you imagine doing something for the saving of your family? Because when this was going on, it hadn't rained yet. It, it had never rained on the earth. And people had to be saved. Look at this crazy man, Noah. Look what he's building. What, what is this that he's building? For 75 years, 
And sometimes, men, I need us to see this today. I mean, you that you know, like going to the job site day in and day out, 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 day in and day out for 75 years. Because he was moved, he had a motivation. God had warned him of what was to come. So he did whatever it took to get it done. Sometimes we get, oh, I gotta go to church. I'll, I'll go when I can. Now, I'm not picking on you, but I, I'm looking, look at this. I mean, there needs to be godly fear once again. There needs to be that reverence. God is warning, warning us in the days that we're living in. How much do you love your families? How much do you love your families? Are you willing to go the extra mile? Or are you willing to put in the time that is needed to be the anchor? Or you know, I, I, I don't, you know, you got it. I got things I got to do. Now I'm talking to me. I'm challenging me. Not just you. I'm challenging us all today. How important it is. Noah, in Genesis 6, 5 through 9, it says this about Noah. I mean, think about that, 75 years. How many here, you, you, you loved it when, when you got to that place of whether it was 30 or 40 years and you got to retire? Maybe, tw it's like, I mean, some can retire at, you know, 20. But can you imagine 75 years at something? Have you ever started a project and you thought, oh, is it ever going to end? But you keep pushing on. You keep pushing through. I see some of you looking at me with that stare. <laughs> Don't you talk about me. But he says this. He says, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah. Say Noah. Noah. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Write that down. Noah was a just man, perfect in his, in his generation, or blameless. It means he had integrity. And the last thing, he walked with God. I'm telling you what, man, if we're going to be the anchor for our family, if we're going to be an anchor to people around us, then we have to have these qualities about us. If we're in it for the long haul. Now, now, if, if, if you want to just take what I'm saying today, it's like, oh, crazy Larry. He's, he's, he's just trying to stir me up. You betcha. I'm trying to stir you up to, to realize how important you are. Man, that's what I'm trying to get you to see, how important you are. And you might say, well, I'm not even married yet. But, you know, there's things even, even around us. And you might say, I don't have children. There's people around you to be an anchor for. I mean, he says to be a father to the fatherless. I'm telling you what, great responsibility. I, I, I look at Noah. He had, he had found favor in the eyes of God. Everybody else, what they were doing, but yet Noah, to his generation, had integrity. He was just. Now, now these words, let me tell you what it means. To just, it means to be fair, morally and ethically sound, to show justice. How many know that's important today? Don't, don't call what's wrong right. There's a lot of stuff going on today that's not right. And, and people are saying, well, that's okay because there's a cause. 
Well, there's a right way of doing things. There's a just way of doing things. A moral way of doing things. How many know who uh, Martin Luther King Jr. is? You know, if you read anything about him, he was a man not of violence. He didn't take that street. He, he, he didn't go down that avenue. He says, hate can't drive out hate. Do you understand that? Hate can't do anything but add fuel to the fire. He said, love is the only thing that can conquer hate. And men, we have to understand that we need to operate with the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Yes. To be patient, to be kind. To hardly notice when you've been wrong. To keep no account of a suffered wrong. To believe the best of all people. To bear up under anything and all things. See, that's the love that never fails. It's not what the world says that is love. See, as men, that we need to get this down and understand that. To be, a, to be a just man. To be a man that is blameless for integrity. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking more than just today. Praise the Lord, I did good today. I mean, it needs to be day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, that we need to be consistent to show our generation, to show our children to speak truth in their life. How many know sometimes children don't want to hear what their parents have to say? Well, I just want to be their friends. Don't be their friends. You be the parent. You, you be that person that's going to be the anchor. You're going to speak into their life. They may not want to hear it, and they may go opposite of what you're saying. But the Bible says train up. Bring them up. Train them up. See, it's more than just one time. It's more than just uh, do what I say. No, they're watching what you're doing. They're watching what you're doing. Integrity means this, to practice being honest and showing consistent and uncompromising adherence to God's word, to his principles, to his values, not compromising. Not giving in to the flesh. Compromising what God has said. We live in a world today that compromises all things and says, well, it's okay. Grace will cover everything. No, grace has everything to do with these three things. Being just, having integrity, and walking with God. When we start walking with God, we're, we're going to learn his principles. And there's going to be a godly fear that will move us. To be the men that we were created to be. To stand tall. To be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. How many know we need a few good men? Amen. Come on, we need men to stand up and be men of God. Amen. Not just kind of part-time. Now God needs you to be full-time. Day in and day out. Consistent. See, it's like I begin to just think that, Larry, I want you to be blameless. I want you to have integrity. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Back up what, what I'm saying to you. Do, do what I've asked of you. How many know that's not always easy doing the right thing? And sometimes you, you may be looked at in a different light. But he just thinks he's better than me. He, you know, he's just a little extreme. You know, ease up. Ease up. <laughs> you don't have to be that good. You don't have to be that blameless. You don't have to have that much integrity. Well, who's saying that? I mean, you all want the Lord to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. I mean, I'm looking, the greatest thing that I have are my children. Hands down. And what I mean by that, my family. And you are my family also. Whether you understand this or not, you're my children. 
the greatest thing that we have is our children. And I want to be able to train them up. I want to be the right example for you day in and day out and to be consistent in it because it matters. And if that means that I've got to challenge you about things in your life, then so be it. How many here you would just say, man, I wish my dad would just, you know, why is he always harping on this? He's trying to make you better. He's trying to make you better. He's wanting you because ultimately, men, that there's going to be a time that you've got to be the anchor of your house, of your home. And whatever you stand for right now, if, if, if you compromise the word of God now, you'll, you'll compromise it later. It's always right now. Faith is always right now. Now faith is. Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody's getting anything, but I'm getting stirred up. Hallelujah. The third thing, walk with God. You know, that means a close relationship. Why, Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. You know, there was that relationship. There was that communion. There was that fellowship. And it's like we've got men, we've got to understand that we can get as close as we want. We can walk humbly before our God. I mean, we can get as close as we want. But you got to want it. More than some of the other things. I don't know if I, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Well, then you're not thinking of your family. <sighs> Think about your family. Noah thought of his family. He was willing to work on that boat for 75 years. Day in and day out, day in and day out, consistent. And that word anchor, I'm, I'm going to read it to you again. I, I, I want you to have this down. The word anchor means this. A person that provides stability or confidence in uncertain situations or times. You can't tell me that that's, that's not a big deal. It's the most important thing. We have people in the world today, our, our society has, and, and it's the world, the world pulling on families. Uh, just, just be free. Just, just go and do, you know, do, do whatever you want to do. Dads, go and do whatever you want to do. Live it up. They'll be all right. How many know we live in a world that that's taking place, that the fathers are just not there? But that should never be in the house of God. You understand me? That should not be the men in the house of God. I'm telling you what, listen to me, fathers. It should take precedent over anything and everything. I'm going to be an example to my children day in and day out. They're going to see me building that boat for them. Because I love them more than I love myself. I want them to be safe. You might say, well, Pastor, you had me until you said that. <coughs> Help. I know this is what the Lord's put on my heart. And how many here you, you you want to find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Amen. I, 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 I want that grace. So I've got to look at my life and say, Larry, am I fair? Am I fair? Have I taught my children to be fair, to be just? Have I taught them to stand for the Lord? To not to be ashamed of Jesus. Have I taught them to, to show justice? To do what's right? Am I living a blameless life? Am I living with values? Are there 
principles? Are, are there God principles that I base my life on? Can people see that about me? Day in and day out. The thing that I know, mercy triumphs over judgment. We're to be discerning, but as we discern, it's not to pull down, it's not to condemn. It's when we see something that's not right, go and make it right. You go and make it right. And the third thing, it's like, I want people to know, Lord, that I'm walking with you. I'm listening to you. Lord, that you have my ear. Not only my ear, but you have my heart. And I want to keep walking with God and talking with God. And I don't want to replace that with anything. Dads, the minute that we start replacing God with something else is the day that we stop working on our boat. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Did you get something today? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, man, we do have parting gifts for you. Okay? I don't want, man, pastor beat me up today. No, I'm challenging you today because the Lord has challenged me. Am I not right in saying that our family is the most important thing? Yes. I mean, how many would agree? God instituted the family. He created the family. And he, he created the male and female. He Mother and father. And, and, and when you honor <clears throat> children, when you honor mother and father, there's a promise. You'll have a long life. <laughs> how many know that there needs to be principles spoken into our children and lived out. Even, you know, being a grandpa, you know, whether you're a great, great what, whatever it is, you still, they need to see your strength. And it needs to come from walking with God. It needs to come from the integrity that comes from his word. And it needs because you're a just man. You're, you're, you're a fair man in all your dealings. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm just going to stretch my hands. and Father, I thank you for each and every person that's in the building. Father, I thank you right now that, that you would minister life to them, encouragement to them. And Lord, that it is you who moves us. That word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And I pray, Lord, that that, that, that word gets into our hearts and it has its place to cause us to be the anchor of our home. That we would no longer just say what I say, but that we would say, do what I do. Father, let it be seen in our homes. Let it be heard. Father, I thank you for your grace being poured out upon us today. Father, I thank you that, that you are the God who justifies us through your son. Lord, I ask that as we leave this place, that your grace would be with us, Lord, to continually building that safe place for our family. Father, I thank you for giving us the strength and the ability to do that. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Now, we're, we're going to go ahead and with the offering. Is that kind of at the end? Was there anything else? And then we can have pictures? Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We, uh, If you brought your offering, we've got plates in the back there on the table. Uh, you can put it in there, and then we, we'd like for you to take a chance, you know, take time. And, and uh, take pictures, okay? Have, have a moment, then you can write on and, and, and write down something to, you know, I'm going to be the anchor for my family in 2020. Amen. 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 Amen.